What's up, nerds? Acheron's character preview is officially out, and that means I have been immediately proven wrong, and I'm glad that I'm immediately proven wrong. We normally get this a week later than this, but I'm super duper stoked about it because we get to learn a lot more about the character publicly than we normally would have. So let's go ahead and take a look at the traces first and the rest of the kit because there's a lot to unpack here, so stick with me. Okay, this is her first trace. When battle starts, she immediately gains a certain number of slash dream and applies a certain number of crimson knot stacks to a random enemy. This will be more explained in the future when we talk about the rest of her kit, her skill and talent specifically, um, but that's just something really important to know about. She just gets to start out with that. That's not associated with her technique. She just gets that for free. And when Slash Dream reaches its upper limit, for every point of Slash Dream that exceeds the limit, she gains one stack of Quadrivalent Ascendance, up to a maximum number of Quadrivalent Ascendance stacks. It doesn't tell us that number here, which is kind of annoying, but obviously you that's really good. It doesn't stop at a certain point. You get more of it. So that's really nice. Anyways, uh, her talent is where this is associated with, and we'll go over that in just a moment. Let's look at the next trace. This is the one that pisses a lot of people off, but it also makes a lot of other people really, really happy. I'm one of the people that it makes really happy. I like this part of her kit. When there are one or more, or one or two, Nihility characters other than Acheron on the same team, the damage dealt by Acheron's basic attack, skill, and ultimate additionally increased by a certain number. So this is what we've been talking about when trying to talk about Acheron and building Acheron. You need two Nihility, Nihility characters besides her. That means three Nihility characters on the same team, including her. This does make it a little bit more specific for her team comps. Her Eidolon 2, just so that you guys are aware, will eliminate one of these uh, needing to be on her team. So that does give you a little bit more breathing room, which is why her Eidolon 2 is so highly desired by the whales. You know what I mean? Just like Dan Hung and Bibber Lune really likes his E2, Acheron will also really like her E2 as well. You do not need this in order to make her function very well. You can totally use her at E0 just so that you guys are aware. But it's important to know that to build likely her best teams, you're going to need at least two Nihility characters besides her on the team in order to get the bonus for this. There might be some testing we can do in order to find out if you take one of these Nihility characters off the team and pair her with somebody like, I don't know, Sparkle or whoever, to see if maybe that's technically better output on damage. We haven't been able to test her properly in person to find this out, so don't necessarily take my word on that. Focus on right now, at least, building the team compositions you have in your head around having two extra Nihility characters besides Acheron, such as Pela, Silverwolf, etc etc like you know well etc etc you get the point here okay these are associated with her talent as well um so let's move on to the last trace here which is associated with her ultimate when the rain when the rain blade or acheron's ultimate hits enemy targets with crimson knot her damage increases backing up to a max number of times and lasting for a certain number of turns when stygian resurge triggers it additionally deals damage a certain number of times each time deals lightning damage equal and is viewed as part of the ultimate damage. So that might sound really confusing. So the rain blade is part of her ultimate. She has three hits of rain blade and then a fourth hit, which is called Stygian Surge. The three hits of rain blade are single target and you can change, you can like choose the target that you're hitting, which is different than let's say, you know, Jing Yuan or uh, Argenti who, like, it's random, right? You get to choose who you're hitting with it with Rainblade, and then the last hit's uh, an AoE, so it hits everything, right? Um, and this, by the way, this trace is directly tied to, or sorry, uh, you get a bonus for this, which is also associated with her signature Light Cone, right? You get a damage buff from the Light Cone for the ultimate, and you could even potentially trigger with this Empty Bubbles uh, buff as well. So her signature Light Cone is going to be absolutely insane for... You just have to read the light cone to know it's really, really good. But if you didn't know, it's also going to uh, kind of like synergize with this particular trace, which is static. It's always here. You don't need anything else. You just need to level her up and activate it. So that's going to be absolutely friggin' cracked. This character is going to be broken. Do you understand now why so many of us want to pull her? We haven't even talked about her talent or her skill or her actual ultimate itself. These are just her traces. Okay, now let's move on to talk about those things. 
These are the level up materials you might need in order to build or you will need in order to build her. So go ahead and start farming these if you haven't already. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at her idle animation. What the heck? She's eating a peach? I'd like to eat some of that peach if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Let's move on here. Uh, so her technique is actually really, really busted. You know, in the special programming, we learned a lot about the technique that makes it look really, really cool, and you can, like, instantly kill enemies. That's not even the good stuff, guys. They did spend a lot of time. The devs spent a lot of time making it look cool. We'll go into that in just a moment. But I just want you guys to understand, it looks cool, but it's actually really good. It's not just a flashy technique. It does really good stuff. Um, you use it, and it immediately attacks an enemy, and she gains quadrivalent ascendance at the start of every single wave and deals lightning damage to all enemies, so an AoE, and reduces toughness of all enemies, irrespective of their weakness type. That's the first sentence, okay? Enemies with their weakness broken in this way, which is all of them, will trigger the lightning weakness break effect. A, a quadrivalent ascendance, Acheron obtains one point of slash dream after she uses her ultimate and applies one stack of Crimson Knot on a random enemy. So, these Quadrivalent stacks will activate after she uses her ultimate, restarting the engines, giving you Slash Dream and Crimson Knot stacks, which is what she wants to do. That's what her talent is all about, and we'll read that in just a second. She wants to build up these Slash Dreams and Crimson Knot stacks. That way she gets increased damage. She needs these Slash Dream stacks in order to use her ultimate, for example. So this just literally starts the process of getting her back to her ultimate by using her ultimate. She synergizes. She has... I can't even talk. She, she has synergy within herself. It's insane. Um, and attacking normal enemies... This is the part that everyone knows about by this point. Attacking normal enemies will instantly defeat them without needing to enter battle. Enemies who aren't hit won't consume technique points. So you can flat, you can just slash this thing all over the place and never actually consume a skill point or sorry, a technique point in order to use it as long as you don't hit an enemy. So you can look really, really cool and like stuff. Anyways, let's move on to her actual abilities here. This is a basic attack. Cool. <laughs> you're never going to, you're never going to use that. Okay. Delete this from your inventory. Okay. Like never use that. Okay. It deals lightning damage uh, and stuff like just, just let's move on. Let's move on. We don't need to look at that. Her talent um, is really, really good. And this is basically where all of her kit works around. This is all, this is revolving. Everything revolves around this talent right here. Okay. Um, when Slash Dream reaches its upper limit, which is 9, by the way, they didn't tell us this here. They didn't tell us it in her uh, in the special programming. But in the special programming, they showed an image, and you only need 9 stacks to activate her ultimate. But the stacks can build up beyond 9 as well, just so that you guys are aware. Um, but it doesn't work the same way. It's kind of like a little harder to explain. But you need 9 of these Slash Dream stacks to activate the ultimate. She doesn't even have energy. She doesn't even have an energy bar, okay? Because she just doesn't use it. She gets to cheat. She's yet another character that just gets to cheat. The ultimate can be activated during the ultimate. It reduces enemy enemy's toughness regardless of weakness types. She loves ignoring weakness types. She does not care, right? And reduces all enemies, all type resistance, lasting till the end of her ultimate. So basically what this means is that she, it, she doesn't care about the weakness type. She reduces their all type resistance and no matter who you hit during the ultimate every single enemy will have this effect on them it's super broken and that's again line one when any unit inflicts debuffs on an enemy target while using their ultimate acheron gains one point of slash dreams and inflicts one stack of crimson knot if debuffs are inflicted multiple on multiple targets then the one stack of crimson knot will be inflicted on the enemy target with the most Crimson Knot stacks. This effect can only trigger once per every ability usage. So, so basically, you debuff an enemy with any of your allies or even her, and this will trigger, giving her more Slash Dream. But you only can get one stack of this stuff every action. So you, so let's say you use like Kafka's ultimate. I don't, I don't recommend using Kafka with her just because that's not what you should do. But it's going to put debuffs on a lot of enemies, right? But you're only going to get one per action. So just keep that in mind um, once per 
action once per effect essentially and that's important to note but it's not really a problem you're going to be able to build up her ultimate don't worry about that um when acheron is on the battlefield when an enemy target leaves or any unit is defeated their crimson knot stacks will be transferred to the enemy target with the most crimson knots left on the battlefield this right here nobody's talking about this i don't know why this is such a huge deal like how many times have you ever used dr ratio's ultimate on an enemy and then you ended up like dealing them more damage than you were expecting and they end up dying and you don't get to use up all of the stacks of his ultimate on that enemy and then a new wave starts and there's just that empty stack that just disappears it goes it just goes into a black hole somewhere you get you don't get it right that sucks right but like why doesn't that go on to the next enemy it don't the best you can get is if you attack an enemy they die and he's supposed to deal a follow-up on them he will deal a follow-up onto the next enemy right but it but the ultimate doesn't say have that same effect which kind of sucks but with acheron she's like yeah i don't care where listen whatever listen your debts are now his debts like she she's literally like like whatever that guy's problem was now he dead okay yeah next the next guy is gonna have to deal with it you know what i mean so i really really love this she gets to just remove all the stacks off the dead enemy and put them onto the new enemy that comes through that is so cool or the enemy that's left that uh has the most crimson not stacked so it's okay some people were like bro don't don't defeat the mobs because then because because this part right here on the top the crimson knot stacks only go on the highest enemy but if you defeat an enemy like if you defeat the mobs the stacks from that enemy when they die will go on to the highest stacked enemy beyond them so it's okay to delete mobs with her or with your team they will just go on to the next enemy so just keep that in mind man there's still so much left okay so her skill um she gains one point of slash dream inflicts one stack of crimson knot on a single target enemy and then deals lightning damage to them as well as a certain amount of lightning damage to the adjacent target so she has one main it's a blast damage effect she will hit three enemies at once potentially depends on like where you're hitting the enemies right three enemies at once the one that you're targeting will end up getting the slash dream and crimson knot stacks she, she'll gain the slash dream and the crimson knot stack will go on to that singular target that you're attacking and then the adjacent targets will take a reduced amount of damage and her skill looks like Sela's ultimate. Imagine she's this powerful, and on top of that, her animation is power creeping your ultimate. Her skill animation is power creeping Sela's ultimate animation. That's insane, dude. Like, what the hell, man? All right, so the last thing we need to talk about here is her ultimate. And look at that dang ultimate. Talk about a domain expansion, okay? Now, this, this last thing we're going to talk about here, uh, so let's get right into this thing. It delivers three rain blades and one Stygian Resurge in succession. So the three rain blades are three separate attacks that you can choose who you are hitting with it, any enemy on the field. And then the Stygian Surge is an AoE effect that hits all enemies. Just so that you guys are aware, enemies cannot be inflicted with Crimson Knot stacks while the ultimate is active. And that's partly because I believe the ultimate actually removes crimson knot stacks if there are enough of them on the enemy so you don't get to like double up on it while she's like doing the ultimate that would be just way too broken she's already insanely broken so don't be mad about that um rain blade deals lightning damage to a single target enemy and re removes up to three stacks of crimson knot from the target when crimson knot is removed it deals lightning damage to all enemies so each time one of those stacks is removed she deals aoe damage to everybody that's insane you're hitting one enemy and then it deals aoe to every oh that's insane with the additional damage multiplier for this increased for every stack of crimson not removed the damage multiplier has a maximum limit so if you are building your acheron teams properly right if you if you have synergized your team well enough you should hopefully be hitting this damage multiplier maximum every single time this is part of how they balanced the character because she's so insanely broken but this also means that there will be a max limit that you can hit and hopefully you can build it so that you can hit that every single time or at least close to every single time so that's a goal to go for while we're building her and using her in combat now the stygian's resurge deals lightning damage to all enemies and removes all crimson knots so all the stacks get removed during her ultimate essentially so you can get a lot of damage off doing this 
and whatever's left over out of the Crimson Knot stacks will just, they will all be removed. So this is a very, 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 very powerful ultimate. It looks super duper cool. And this is basically where most of her damage will be coming from. This is what you are building for with her talent. And then when you use her ultimate, everything that you've been building for after all of you, all these other skills, her talent, everything, all her traces, everything, all works towards a very, very powerful, big booming ultimate that will likely be the biggest damage multiplier or the, the biggest damage number you've ever seen on your account. Anyways, I've been yapping for way too long. I'm out of breath. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.